Welcome back to another video in my series looking at Bergmuller's Opus 100. Now in this video I'm going to be looking at number 14 which is a Styrian dance. This is again one of the ones that isn't so well known and yet it has a real charm and a lilt about it. I just love it. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to give you a, a, a little hint of what the piece sounds like in a moment. Then we're going to look at it how we can encourage our students to begin to understand the style of the waltz, which is what it is, and also maybe start to play around, mess around a little bit with some improvisation ideas. So this particular piece, as I say, it's number 14. It's a laindler. And if you've ever watched the uh, Sound of Music, you'll, you'll know a laindler from the dance that they do um, at one, one of the points. So it's an Austrian folk dance. It's a waltz though, and it has to be, uh, Bergmuller has written movement de waltz in, in the movement of a waltz. He's written rather a fast speed, so I'm 176, which is jolly fast. But for me, it needs to be a little more relaxed. It has some sections. We have an introduction. Get your partners ready for the waltz. And then the first section starts like this. And there you've got a typical waltz, haven't you, with the um cha cha um cha cha um cha cha um in the left hand. As a second study viola player, I'm used to going mm -cha -cha, mm -cha -cha. and of course you've always got to be lifting on beats two and three. So we have a lovely strong first beat and lift on two and three because you want the dancers to float on to the next um, the next foot. On one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So you get your students waltzing around the room, or you could just get them swaying up to you. And over the top of that, we've got this lovely, beautiful, graceful waltz. This melody. And I just love the way he, that goes up. And then just misses, overshoots the G and comes down. So talking of G, this is in G major. And the left hand mostly is doing one and five seven as it goes through. And then after that first section, we go into the second part, the B section. And this changes. Have a little listen, see if you can spot how it's changing. there you heard hopefully the fact that it was gone to the relative minor so this is in E minor and it has a darker feel to it because of that it has these lovely B, B, E again mostly one and five seven that's all um, little flourishes in the right hand on the beat shoot where he just arches up so the chord is E minor and he goes up to a C just clever little things like that that really give it this lovely sparkle I think after that and he leads us beautifully in to the second part of the B section Is it back into G major again, that, that um, B2, let's call it. And then we move on to the third part, the C part, and see if you can hear what has happened here. So yet another key, and this time he's gone off into C major. So he's gone to the subdominant there. And I love these I can leaps that you have to do. That was 
well, they're an extended one, I have to admit. Um, but, but just wonderful, wonderful sense of, yep. Um, and just imagine the dancers maybe doing some leaping in the air or twirling or something like that. And you get these dotted minims again in the left hand, which just add, change the texture a little bit. Just delightful, just delightful. And then you go back and you play the first section again, with or without the introduction. I quite like it with the introduction, but you, there is the option of doing it without. So it's a fantastic piece, this Styrian dance. Now, I did say that I would give you some little pointers about improvisation. So what we're improvising really with here is a waltz and understanding the style of a waltz, the characteristics of a waltz, um, I think is one of the really important teaching points you can get from this. Even if they're not able to play it yet, you can use it as a demonstration. So what have we got? We've got that um cha cha. And you've got that absolutely in the left hand, that's what's written out there. And you've got an elegant melody, and the way that um, Bergmuller's is written is, is with an upbeat. And his is quite a sophisticated melody. We're not going to do anything quite like that. We've got to have it on a, a lovely strong first beat, of course, and it needs to be quite light and joyous. So what can we take? Let's take the ingredients of the left hand as our basis. So maybe over the top, let's just you put in a melody, see what happens as we go up, starting on a G, just using a G major scale. And then as we change to chord uh, to the 5-7, we want to be lurking around somewhere on that D, F sharp, A, maybe a C, and then back again to the, to the G chord again. Let's just see what happens. It might work, it might not. And of course for me that's fairly straightforward, I'm not the greatest of improvisers by any means, um, so it wasn't particularly imaginative. Other students might struggle there, especially if they're not aware that the F sharp is actually part of chord five. D, F sharp, A, and they can sit there and play around with that F sharp and A, which is part of chord five. What else could I do? Um, well, if they don't get that, then you need to direct them even more, probably just to maybe using the triad. So what happens if I just literally use the G major triad and the D major triad? imaginative and they probably won't like the sound of that too much so then work with them and say what about filling in yeah. Yeah. <laughs> instantly going up and down by step and it's beginning to sound a bit more a bit more like it what happens if you then add some articulation let's stick with that nice ed one ingredients called one called five seven using the different keys of the piece then all of a sudden you have something you can improvise on because the main priority of, of improvisation is to use a very limited amount of material but within that you can then be free so use the harmony that's given use the rhythms that's given in the right hand 
put the two together and play around. Some of it will sound good, some of it won't. Use your ears, get them to feedback your students and progress from there. Well, I hope you found that useful and I'll be back with another video on the Bergamilla Opus 100 very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.